Hello and welcome back to my Java tutorial series. As you can see, as always, our finished product from the last episode, and let's just start up a new Java project in Eclipse. Now today, episode nine is going to be about typecasting and the primitive data object in casers. But first, let us set up our normal environment including our main class and our main method. So, while I set this up, let's explain what we're doing today. So, we went over primitive data types quite a bit ago, as you may remember. So, basically, they're primitive data types. You can set them to literals, and um, they're not really objects, like public static integer int1 equals 0. So if you go to like int1, when you do a dot, try to see what kind of submethods it has, it's not much. I mean, well, it's not really anything. Because, well, there's nothing to do because it's a primitive data type. And since it's a primitive data type and it's a thing, it doesn't really have anything in it. But, what there is, is an, uh, an object which kind of um, encases the primitive type and one of them is called an integer. We'll just call this integer one. Integer one. I think you can set them to literals. Yeah. So basically they're like strings. String is, uh, well, and these are like strings and strings are like these and where they kind of in, encase a primitive type but you can also set them to literals. So they're kind of the bridge type between primitive types and objects. I mean, string obviously doesn't encase anything, but it is kind of like this type. So now, if we put integer 1 and dot, we can see it now has a whole bunch of sub-methods we can use to use it. You know, like huh, the value of and stuff, which those are static. You can do if it equals another object, because these also extend object directly, just as string does. You know, you can to string, wait a bit wait which has to do with threading which I think we'll do in one or two episodes which you'll really like because my main goal in this series is I mean not only how to teach you how to program Java but teach you how to use programming in Java like you don't really program as a hobby per se even though I mean I think it's really enjoyable that's definitely an applicable use but I mean, you can make money off of programming, or you can just make stuff for yourself that's very useful, like utilities, or you can even make games. And we'll go into more methods of how to do any of those um, in the future. But again, let's get back to the episode. So there's um one there's a uh, an encasing thing for all the uh, the primitive data types. So you know, public static. Um, double double one equals I don't know zero point something or other and then we can do public <laughs> static double uh, since it's a different name we'll just have to do double two equals something or other now you know you just put another crazy number there too. Now you see if we try to access double two, a whole bunch of sub methods, you can get the integer value, which converts it to an integer and stuff. His infinite is interesting. Yeah. But then of course if we reference double one, there's nothing because it's a primitive data type. Now the reason you would use one over the other is mainly um, because some methods in the job API or ones you might make might take an object as opposed to a primitive data type so if we use the um, this public static uh, let's make a return an int to int and we're just going to accept what's called a number now a number What's wrong with this? Oh yeah, because it has to return something. We'll just put a return null. Now of course, well it returns int, so we can't put null. If this returned an object of any kind, we could put null. But 
since it doesn't return an object, we in, since it returns a primitive type, we have to put a literal. So basically, a number is like a parent class, which is the superclass of a whole bunch of which is the superclass of all the um, the object and cases for all the primitive integer types. Like it parents double and long and integer, but it doesn't parent parent character or string. And this, of course, directly extends object as well as everything else. But what we're mainly going to use this for is um, learning how to typecast as well. Oh, one second. Sorry about that. We're going to learn how to typecast with it as well. So it accepts any number. So if we try to do um, integer int 2 equals 2 int um, I can try to put double one in here, and that works perfectly. Because whenever you pass um, a primitive type to something that requires something, it it also looks for its parent types in the object. So double will reference double the class, the object in caser, which is then a subclass of number. But um, what else we could do is that um. For typecasting, uh, another thing we can do is, well, we could typecast it. So, I have an idea. So, we'll do public. We'll actually change this to object. We'll actually, we'll change this to number. And we'll say change. Well, no, we're going to, I didn't want to write that there to object and it'll return a number when you input um, any number basically which is kind of redundant but you'll see where we're getting so we're gonna say for any number you, we're gonna say return new number number I think you can do that I'm not sure cannot instantiate number oh darn I don't like that. <laughs> okay, let's just say return new object. Maybe we can just do that and have it return object. So basically, you'll input a number and it'll convert it to a plain watered down object. See, but what we want, we want an int back from this, not an object. So what are we what are we doing here? I mean we um we can't convert from object to int, can we? Well, we can via typecasting. So you see int if you put it in parentheses next to it, it tries to typecast it into what it is, into this. So since int, or at least integer, which they're interchangeable almost, integer extends object, which this returns. So if the object that this returns. This can return any object. It doesn't necessarily return an object. You would say return new integer 5. So this will return 5, but it's in case in the object as opposed to the primitive type. But it's returning an integer, not an object. But an integer happens to be a type of object, so you can obviously return there. So if you try to remove this, you're trying to, it returns an object. I mean, it's, an ac it's actually an integer, but this method says, hey, I returned an object. You can't just try to set an object to an integer. That doesn't work, even though it is returning an integer, but the method doesn't know that. So we have to make the method know that by putting sl the slash integer. So we're like, I return an object, but since you're trying to turn my object into an integer, I mean, why not try that? This works. It um, also is a type of exception when you cast something incorrectly, but we'll get to that after we just uh, print out this value of integer 2. And you see it printed out 5, since we made it return a new 5. But, okay, so what would happen, you can cast this as long as you cast it to something that extends what it actually is, or what it's actually trying to be. So, basically, if you try to... Um, do something else like number. You can't um, typecast to something um, 
higher, I don't think. Let me see. Yeah, cannot convert from number to int is the problem here. It's not a top problem with typecasting, is that you can't convert from number to int. Ugh, excuse me. So we if we just say um, number num1 equals number, basically what we're trying to do is cast integer to number, which we'll see what happens. It prints 5, since they are compatible. But let's do something really crazy and say, hey, we're trying to get a string out of here. And we're in string, um, of course, extends object, so it's like, hey, I'm trying to return an object, but since string is a type of object, I'll let you get away with typecasting it. But the point is, integer and string are completely different. So what we should get is class cast exception, because integer cannot be cast to string. Exactly what it explains in that error message right here. So we're trying to incorrectly cast. Since integer and string are both subclasses of object, they'll let you do what you're doing code-wise. Like, um, Eclipse isn't telling you that you're doing anything wrong, because it doesn't know any better, to be honest. So when you actually try to return it, and try to get a string out of this to object, then, you know, it's returning an integer, not a string, so you're going to get in trouble. But what we might be able to do is just do to string. So we could just turn the object into a string. I mean, this obviously has nothing to do with what we were doing, but basically you can turn any object into a string. With, I mean, with literals and um, primitive data types, it re returns actually what it is. But, like, if you do... Um, um, an array to string. I think I showed you this in a previous episode, but if we do like a public static character array equals I mean just a quick character array and we try to print out character array to string actually this would probably work perfectly. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay, so we're trying to print out an array. An array is actually mandated by a class. I don't know if we can, uh, we can't hover over to see it, but there's a, an array class. So basically this is an ob an array is a type of object, with, no matter what type of array it is. But once you transform any object into a string, which isn't like encasing a primitive data type or is a primitive data type, you're going to get this weird jumbled message, which is basically Java's um, handle for that type of object. So if you like do a different type of object, it would um, prospectively be different. Well, it should be different. But you'll get just this weird string of characters. So uh, that's a lot about typecasting. Now typecasting is very important, especially depending on what you're do especially when you're working with stuff with like many different stuff. Like if you're programming um, a game and you have like like um, animation, which is a um, entity extend sprite which extends animation, all of these are objects, if you're trying to and um, creature extends entity and like item entity extend, extends entity, if you're trying to like um, do like a uh, map out a map with um, certain entities at certain points you're not sure whether it's a tile entity or a creature but you know it's an entity so you probably want to handle it via entity and return whatever it was back to what it was as opposed to handling it specifically as a creature or a uh, tile entity. So basically it'll let you do all this stuff like return um, an entity like it act it's actually returning back whether it's a tile entity or a creature but it's saying I'm returning a um, in just a bland entity so you can do whatever do whatever you want with it at all and it's uh, also important especially with typecasting if you know typecasting, then it's going to be easier when we get to generic types, which again will be in the next uh, episode or two, which are very nice. There are a lot of stuff to use and um, a lot of stuff to um, be had. That's very nice, <laughs> to say the least. So, I think that was a pretty swift episode. So that has been typecasting and primitive data type object casings and I will and also I will be uh, transcribing all of my code into um, from all of my episodes either to a downloadable format or a format readable from the internet per request of one of my viewers so uh, I'll update the description of each of my previous videos 
to a link to the source code of that respective video and you can download it or view it online depending on what I choose and so if you ever get lost in the video you can just look at the source code for training but uh, I will see you all next time